Here's the last sort of situation we're gonna have to learn to deal with. What if we take a region and revolve it around an axis, but that region is not flush with the axis of symmetry? So here's an example. This region here is the shaded in region cut off by the sine of x curve and the cosine of x curve in the first quadrant. If I revolve that region about the x-axis, can you see that there's going to be this big hole? There's a space between the lower curve, which is sine of x, and the x-axis. So when I revolve that shape around, there's going to be a hole in the middle cut out by that empty space that's getting revolved instead of the colored in space that's getting revolved. And you can see the picture here. Sometimes it can help. So once I take that area and revolve it around the x-axis, when I take a slice through, it's going to be like a circle, but it's going to be a circle with a big hole in it. So a cylinder with a hole in it, especially a flat cylinder with a hole in it, we're going to refer to as a washer. And we did this a few weeks ago in class where we, I think, found the volume of a CD. So we noticed that there are a couple of ways to do it. You could find the area of the CD as if it, the face of the CD as if it were solid and then the area of the hole and subtract them and then multiply the result by the thickness. Or you could find the volume of the CD as if it were whole, W-H-O-L-E, and then subtract out the volume of the hole. Either one works. So here, just for reference, although you're gonna have to do this on your own many, many times, so many times you will memorize it. The volume of a washer so a cylinder but with a hole in the middle, is pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the small radius squared, all times the thickness. Or just notice that you could factor the pi and the thickness out. Mm, no, you could distribute the thickness and have two separate integrals or not. It's going to be up to you. So watch what happens. I'm going to go through my same process. I'm going, I have already drawn in my shape. I'm going to draw in my axis of revolution using red. I'm going to reflect that shape over the axis of revolution. Looks like Pac-Man or a dragon. And so before we move on to that, could we figure out the limits? Remember, I'm going to be taking slices perpendicular to my axis of revolution. So I'm going to need to, and so I'm going to have th slices that are vertical, which means their thickness is going to be a change in x. So I'm going to need to integrate with respect to x, which means I'm going to need the x limits on that shaded region. Well, this one is x equals zero. It's pretty easy. That limit there, that's going to be the x value where sine and cosine intersect in the first quadrant for the first time. So I hope you're envisioning your trigonometry wheel. You're thinking sine of x equals cosine of x. So you're thinking of some point, some angle on the unit circle where the x and the y are equal. That happens when x equals 45 degrees. Or in this case, we're going to measure in radians pi over 4. So the limits on that shaded region, they go from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 4. So now, watch what happens when I try to draw in a slice. I'm just going to go to the other picture to draw in the slice. I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for the radius of a slice, assuming there were no hole in the middle. And then I'm going to have to take a slice of the hole and figure out the radius of the hole. So it does happen to matter which way I draw my circle, or at least which way I think about it. So remember that it was this region up here that was the region that was shaded in originally. Originally, Underneath the x-axis is the reflection. So when I draw my green circle, my green slice, I'm going to draw from the axis of revolution toward the shaded region. So I'm going to draw from here up to the far reaches of the shaded region. 
back behind the axis of revolution down to the far edge of the reflection and back up. My question is in blue, blue, what is the radius of that green slice I just drew? So obviously the center of my circle is going to be the axis of revolution. I'm going to draw from the axis of revolution towards the far end of that circle, draw toward the shaded region. And I'll remember that that curve up there was cosine of x. Do we actually talk about that? How do I know which curve is which? Well, you have to think of what you know about the cosine curve. The cosine curve, its value at x equals zero is y equals one, and then it starts to come downhill. Sine of zero is zero, and it starts to go uphill. So that's how I knew which curve was on top. So I know that the top of my blue radius is on the cosine of x curve. The bottom of the blue radius is just this line y equals zero. So that radius, which is the outside radius, it's the radius of my slice, assuming there's no hole, no H-O-L-E in this problem. So I'm gonna call that capital R. Oh wow, that's confusing, because I call that region capital R. I'm gonna call this capital R for big radius. That's going to equal cosine of x. Now I'm going to use, you were wondering why you needed a fourth color. Now I'm going to use my fourth color. I'm going to use yellow. Let me get this guy out of the way. Capital R is still cosine of x, even though that erased. So now I'm going to have my axis revolution is still red. I'm going to, in yellow, draw a slice of the hole, H-O-L-E hole. I'm going to start my yellow marker at the axis of revolution. I'm going to draw toward the shaded region. So I'm drawing up because that's where the shading was. And I'm going to stop when I get to the first graph because that's where, well, between here and here, this is where all the air is, right? This is the hole in the middle of my picture because there was nothing in this shaded region so that when I revolve it around the axis of revolution, I'm just revolving a bunch of air. That's how I get a hole. So here, at my axis of revolution, we'll pretend that's red. And then I'm gonna start drawing from the axis of revolution up toward the edge of the hole back down behind the axis of revolution toward the far edge of the reflection and back up. Now I'm going to ask myself, when I draw in the radius of that slice, the bottom of the radius sits on the x-axis, so y equals zero. The top of my radius lies on this curve, which we said was the sine of x curve. So little r is going to equal sine of x minus 0, top minus bottom, but obviously I can leave out that minus 0. So little r is going to be sine of x. I'm going to go back to the other screen so I can draw my, so I can write my integral. Okay, a couple quick reminders so I can bring it all together and write my integral. My axis of revolution is the x-axis. I'm going to take slices perpendicular to it, so my slices are vertical. That means the thickness of every slice is a change in x. So I'm going to be integrating with respect to x. I'm going to make that a nice big integral. That means my limits need to be x values. The smallest x in the, my original shaded region is 0. The biggest x is pi over 4. There are a couple ways to do this. I can write two integrals, or this first time I'm just going to write one integral. I'm essentially going to write that expression You'll find that most times you'll want to factor the pi out to the front, although it clearly doesn't, it's not important whether you bring the pi out in front or not, but I will probably always put the pi out in front. So this is going to be pi times capital R squared minus little r squared. If you want to write that in so you remember and then fill it in the next time, that's fine. This is cosine of x squared minus sine of x whoosh, whoosh, squared. 
that's all inside the integral. That's capital R squared minus little r squared. That is not the same as capital R minus little r, and then squaring it. You have to square the capital R, square the little r, and subtract in between. This answer gets full credit. Just note that you could also write equivalently, that's pi times the integral from zero to pi over four, cosine squared of x dx, minus, this is what it would look like if you wrote a second integral, um, zero to pi over four, sine squared of x dx. That uh, set of parentheses is optional, you could use it or not use it. So either one of these answers, full credit.